Can you learn Python before learning HTML, C++, and Java? Yes. What's up team? It is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and I am here recording this video because Jamar from the YouTube channel, I hope I'm saying that right, asked, and the definitive answer is yes, you can. This is why I believe that yes, you can learn Python before learning HTML, C++, and Java. It's because those are all completely, totally different things. They are related only in the sense that they are all programming languages. Now, some people will say HTML is not a programming language. I'm not here to argue. According to the laws of computer science, if there ever were such a thing, HTML falls within the definition of programming language. Some may not agree, but that's the way it is. Some people don't agree that a tomato should be a fruit. But by all the specifications that make a fruit a fruit, a tomato is a fruit. Because one of the specifications of being a fruit, like there is nothing that says a fruit has to be sweet. It just has to be whatever it is all the tomato has. When it comes to programming languages, different programming languages are used for different things, but only because of the way they evolve. In order to make this super simple, we're gonna go all the way back to the beginning. Now, I'm maybe not the best person to, to lay this out because it is difficult to explain these things without a whiteboard or like a, uh, you know, diagrams and all this other stuff, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. But if at the end of this video, which will be in another you are still confused, there's two places you can go on YouTube. One place is you can go over to Crash Course Computer Science. So, computers really have allowed us to do some pretty amazing things. Don't call computers magical. They are not, I repeat, are not magical. Ben. Fantastic. It is probably the best, the best computer course I have ever taken. And it was all YouTube videos. Very well produced, very entertaining. There's some dope animations in there. I will watch it. The next place I would go is over to Socratica and look at their tutorial on Python and SQL. And I think maybe they have some stuff on PHP too. But the speaker, I don't know her name. She is very robotic and very entertaining. And if you've never used Python before, or you're interested in Python, or you're thinking about Python, she is gonna make you wanna learn Python because Python is dope. I can talk to machines. I code. But at the same time, every other computer language is dope. They allow us to make computers do stuff. This is all magic. These are just different spells we can use to do the same thing. This X-Man might use laser vision, and this X-Man shoots the same lasers out of his Same stuff, two different places. Computers, same stuff. Computer languages, that's what they do. They just, different ways to do sometimes the same stuff. With that being said, let's talk about the differences here. C++ was born from C. C was born from some other programming language, which was born from other pro some programming language. And all of this stuff came from ones and zeros, which were uh, possibly a representation of, you know, the base elements of the universe, right? But we don't need to go like all super deep and get crazy here. In the very beginning, we would have to write programs in ones and zeros. Like we would have punch cards, these little tapes, little holes in them, and that's how we would make our programs. Um, that had nothing to do with ones and zeros. I apologize. I'm just, I'm taking you guys all, all off the, the, the path. <laughs> ones, <laughs> every, every, everything that happens on a computer boils down to essentially a yes and a no, right? And the ones and zeros make that easy because when you turn the power on, either the power is on or the power is off, right? So one is on, zero is off. This business is binary. Alive or dead. You're a one or a zero. Alive or dead. If Alive or dead. So to make it easier to tell computers to do stuff, we had to come up with something else because writing a word using just ones and zeros would take forever. And if you wrote the word wrong, you would have to go back and figure out where you went wrong. So somebody came up with a way to make this easier, right? So there's a different language for that. You write something in this language, some other program reads it and turns it into ones and zeros, the computer does this thing. And then somebody said, dude, that language is hard too. We'll make another language that's even easier to understand. And so now we have this other language. This language, maybe it processes it to this other language. 
in that lang in that language processes it for the computer or maybe it just skips that stuff all together and bam the computer does what it needs to do this is where C came from in other programming languages. There are some computer nerds out there who are gonna be like, ah, oh, this dude is messing this all up. For most people, I think this explanation will be good enough. If you wanna go build rockets and be a rocket scientist, you're looking at the wrong video. If you wanna build web applications, maybe you're in the right place. I'm not gonna write any code in this video. I'll write some code at some point, or you can check out the Code365 Startup Lab, which has plenty of code there for you to learn, especially, well, may maybe it's pretty much, if you're beginning, you know absolutely nothing, check out the code 365startuplab.com. So every language was made to make building applications, to make telling a computer, to make giving a computer instructions easier. Where C shined is somebody wrote a book and it was a very well-written manual and it made it easy for people, regular people, to come and learn this program. And, and it came along at the time that you could go out and buy a computer and sit it on your desk and it had a screen, you can install the software, you could read the book and you could build your own program, make your own game, make, make, make your own applications, do whatever it is you wanted to do. C++ came along to make that process even easier. And then there was some stuff that traditional programming languages, languages did, things like allow you to put stuff in memory and take stuff out of memory. You had to manage all that stuff. C++ made it easier. So you got better syntax and you got an easier way to read programming. I mean, an easier way to uh, type, to, to, to create the programs. After that, we get into interpreted languages. Now what these are, because the step back, C and C++ applications, typically they would be run through a compiler. And what the compiler would do is compile that code down to ones and zeros to be ran on whatever processor the computer was on or to be run by whatever operating system that program was compiled on. So in order to run a program on a Mac, you had to write it on a Mac and compile it on a Mac. Well, you could write it on a Windows machine and then put it on a Mac, but you'd have to compile it. This would make it hard for regular people because every time you wanted to use a program, you would have to compile it. Not many people know how to do that. You got to go get a compiler. You got to do that. You got to do all this stuff. So somebody said, hey, what if you made something that ran everywhere? And that's where JavaScript came from. So now you got what's called the Java Virtual Machine, which is written to work on any operating system. And all it does is it takes in Java code and it spits out code for that particular operating system. So now I can write a program on Windows and it can run on Mac or Linux or wherever. The problem with that is, is that not all Java virtual machines were created equal and something may run fast on this computer and it wouldn't run fast on that computer. Well, it doesn't even matter. Then someone decided that, hey, that stuff is too hard to understand. And that's where Python came from. Python is a very easy to read language. Now, the reason why Python has become so popular, number one, is very easy to read. Number two, it has fantastic documentation. Number three is self-documenting. So as you write the code, you have to do things in the code if you're writing Python the right way that makes it easier for other people to come and read. Really well-written programs in Python, they become their own book on how to use the program. So you're reading the code in the program and it's telling you how it does stuff. That's why Python is so popular. And because it's easy to read, you get scientists and you get doctors and engineers and all these people who do these things on a regular basis. And as they learn Python, they're like, yo, I can make this thing that I can use over and over again. And so they make it and then they share it and it becomes a library. Then somebody takes a bunch of libraries together and they turn them into a framework. And now you can use Python to do things like build websites and make games and make desktop applications. Now we get to HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And all it means is that you write something in regular text and another program, typically a web browser, comes and reads that text and makes it display on the screen. Now, HTML in today's terms encompasses JavaScript and CSS. So we can think of them all as one thing, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, PHP could have took this title. I don't know what happened. Something went wrong, but hey, it is what it is. JavaScript makes it easy for you to write things for the browser. You can run things on the browser. Now we have Node, you can run things on the server. Um, and basically you can do front, front end and back end uh, with one programming language. And it is probably the highest level programming language you, you can get to. Well, not even the highest because we have other languages like Mocha, which make JavaScript syntax super easy. There's probably some language out there that makes Python syntax easy. Like I hear Go is like very like, 
easy to understand and write and read. But these are high level programming languages. You just write them, something else interpret, ter, interprets them. They're very performant. And so in that sense, they operate just the same as Java. The difference is, is that the syntax is easier to write. It's easier to understand. It's easier to do stuff. Now, again, some people are going to argue and say, hey, Cass, this dude, he's messing this all up. All right, those people, leave a comment. Tell me where your videos are. I want to go and learn. The people who are watching me talk about this stuff, they want to go and learn this stuff too. He just asked the question, can I learn Python first? Yes, you can. And maybe you should, depending on what you want to do. If you want to do math and you may want to build web applications that utilize that math and you want to build charts and graphs, you want to crunch numbers, you want to analyze data, Python's the way to go because data scientists, engineers, doctors, lawyers, all these, the, all these really smart people have written libraries and frameworks that we can use to do just about anything we can imagine in Python. If you want to build web applications, if you want to build web games, if you want to build stuff like that, then HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and even PHP. PHP is dope. It's, it's super dope. But anyway, team, we're not here to talk about my love of PHP uh, or, my, or, or my hatred. I don't have a hatred for anything computers. I love computers to death. They're my best friend. But anyway, team, share, subscribe, like. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up so YouTube knows that you guys still showing me some love. And, and, and it, the algorithm, the algorithm goes and shows other people these videos so they can learn too. But team, right, if you don't know computer science, never seen any of this stuff before, Crash Course Computer Science will bring you up to speed. Check out Socratica, look at the Python SQL tutorials, their computer programming tutorials on Socratica, it's on YouTube, Socratica, you can, you'll find it. Or you can check out the Code 365 Startup Lab and I've got like six or seven free courses there on code editors, HTML, CSS, very, very basic, simple introductory stuff. More courses coming. I just launched the the uh, the Code 365 Startup Lab course course, and the very first part of the course is all about how to find clients and get paying clients and uh, and make some money, so you can use that money to uh, pay for the rest of your learning experience. But anyway, team, that is it. Thanks for hanging out with me here. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you learned something. I'm your biggest fan, the real Casadero. I don't know you. I never met you, but I'm pretty sure, almost positive, 99%. You got some greatness within you somewhere. Just got to let it out, team. Just got to let it out. Before you start doing any of this stuff, figure out what you want to do. Figure out what you want to build. That will dictate the rest. If you want to ask about what you should use, hey, leave a comment. Hey, Cass, right? What language should I use to build this thing? I'll give you my input. I may be wrong. Maybe somebody on the channel will correct me. I'm babbling now, team. I'll see you guys next time. The Real Casadero, your biggest fan.